Hello. 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 Billy. Yes. Who am I quoting? Hello. Oh, dude. Hello. Are, are we doing a... No, you're not doing Biff. <laughs> Let's see. No, I'm not doing <laughs> I was waiting for a McFly at the end of that. No, just... Hello. I'm lost in the sauce. You know how Owen Wilson is like, wow, how he's the wow mm-hmm. guy? Like, everyone's like, wow. That's a, that's yes. Owen Wilson? Mm-hmm. So there was another actor from the... Who's big, like, in the 80s, who would... Who who his catchphrase is basically, hello. Okay, you're gonna have to tell me, otherwise people are gonna start not listening to our <sighs> podcast anymore. Okay, okay, Billy Crystal. Oh, okay. I probably hello, just, probably there. just a really bad impression. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> but we're there. We we made it. Yeah. That, but all I think of is Princess Bride. True to blave. Love. Oh, that's right. To blave, and we all know to blave means to bluff. So he's playing cards, and he cheated. (laughs) Uh, Now I want to go watch that movie. One of the things that I love coming across when I'm doing research on movies and stuff is finding information about the underdog, finding information about a person or something that didn't necessarily get the credit that they deserve. And while I was browsing the internet one day, I came across this article on Polygon about an actor who played Gimli in Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings. Now, when I say actor and Gimli, the first name that's going to pop in your head is obviously John Reese davies But that's not the actor I'm talking about. Sure, John Reese davies was the face of Gimli. Uh, He was the guy in all the close-ups. He was the voice of the character. He was credited as Gimli. But there was one other actor who played the character, and he spent a hell of a lot more time in the role than Reese Davies did. His name was Brett Beatty, and we are going to talk with you about him on this episode of Secret Level. I am Joey Parr, Editor-in-Chief of GeekTyrant.com, and joining me is the luxurious Billy Fisher. That's the best way to describe me, right there. (laughs) Luxurious. You are luxurious. I am. I feel luxurious today. Do you really? I I do. How do do you live such a luxurious life? Um, you know, eat a lot of sushi. Oh I, yeah, sushi is definitely a luxurious food. It is luxurious. PP and J's. PB and J's are good too. Not quite We're, luxurious, unless I unless you consider wheat bread luxurious because I eat it on wheat bread. And if you hold a pinky up while you're eating said PB and J, <laughs> that is the epitome of high class. And then you're in the luxurious state of mind. Fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree with you on this. When you sent this to me, I've been ready to talk about it since that time because it just feels like it's a, it's not a huge injustice to the world, but it is an injustice to somebody who gave us one of the greatest movie trilogies of all time. Yeah. Well, and the other thing, he's not credited on IMDb. No, sir. He's barely credited in the movie. We're going to get into that. There's just, I've been very excited to talk about this one because this guy's story is freaking awesome. Like, I love his story. And I'm excited just to share that story with you. But before we jump into that, yep. Billy. Yes, sir. What have you been up to this week? Anything? Uh- have you been um, like reading anything, watching anything? Yeah. So my big thing right now is that I'm 
I've been trying to do a lot of reading. I'm trying to catch up on things that I missed in the past, and I'm trying to catch up to now. I finished The Wheel of Time, the very first book of The Wheel of Time series, um, which is going to be... The the whole first book is played out on the Amazon Prime series Wheel of Time. Uh, the, writer, the writer Robert Jordan was very detailed in everything, and it was one of the longest books that I've read in a long time. I'm really excited for it. But what about you? Cool. What have you been up to? Well, I actually started re-watching a series again. I actually talked to you about this series, man, maybe probably a couple of years ago when I first watched it. Because I already I had already caught the series late, mm. Halt and Catch Fire. Ah, uh, yes. I and never got to I never watched it. You still I haven't watched it? Oh, I still have man. not, no. So it's been a it's been a few years since I've watched it and I just started watching it again and I'm just like Man, this show is just so freaking good. And since I'm watching it again, I thought I'm going to give it a plug here because if you have not watched Halt and Catch Fire, you need to watch the shit out of that show because it's super good. I'm, I'm really surprised I haven't watched it because... Dude, it's right up your alley too, man. It is. It's and like it's got something I know you'd it. love. Right? But yeah, he's one of my favorite actors is Lee Pace. I love the guy. He's amazing. And I can't believe I'm not watching a show that he's in right now. <laughs> so he was previously in. It's over with. And I could catch it up at any time. I'm just lazy. Yeah. So I'm just, I, I just jumped back into that. And and I forgot. I, I mean, I knew it was, I remember like telling everybody I know to watch it. But then right. putting it back on again and re-watching it, it just reminded me once again how great that show was. Like just so well written and it didn't get a lot of hype while it was on like i don't remember anyone talking about it no one recommended it to me when when it was actually on the air i didn't discover it until i don't i don't even remember it being on tv and so when i found it for the first time it was on netflix and I was just completely blown away, and I have no idea why I had never heard of this show before. Because it's seriously I've... probably in my top ten favorite shows. Oh, that's crazy! I haven't made a top ten list in a very long time. <laughs> we'll, we'll do one of those soon. I think it was on AMC, correct? It was on was AMC, it? yeah. And yep. so the only time I remember it is you'd get little plugs for it during The Walking Dead. I don't even remember seeing plugs for it. That's what's crazy. Yeah, but I mean, the plugs were just like they they'd put a little insignia for it down in the corner, mm. and it would play on like Tuesdays. But it was battling against something that everybody was watching at the time. Like sure. it, it was given a horrible spot. But the actors in it, what was it? Um, let's see, who else was in it? Um, Scoot McNary. Yep. Is he in that? Yeah. Yeah, it was okay. So yeah, it was Lee Pace, Scoot McNary, Mackenzie Davis, like. Just those three alone. I mean, who wouldn't want to watch them in a series? Amazing cast. 100% agree. So, yeah. I got to get on it, man. Yeah. My homework assignment to you and to everyone else who has not watched Halt and Catch Fire to go watch it. It's it's so good. Just a great show. It's about the rise of computer technology and building a computer to compete with IBM and you know, all these other computer companies that were all started spurring up around the same time in the eighties. And it just takes you through the eighties all the way through like the nineties. And it's just so good. So it's definitely worth, worth your time, especially if you're a yes. tech geek. I'm definitely going to watch it now because I completely forgot about it until you just said that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to go take, take that on this week, but let's, let's jump into this now. Let's, let's talk about Brett Beatty. Brett Man, Beatty. this guy. He's like he's like my new hero. I won't lie. No, I understand that. Like after reading this and hearing what he went through to make sure that that movie went well. Well, he man. sacrificed so much for this role. So much is it's just All right, let's just dive into it, shall we? Yes, all let's right. Go. So, so this guy had no previous film credits. No crazy action experience he just had a bit of high school drama he was a black belt in martial arts 
He had some horse riding experience, and he was four foot ten. So he was one hundred percent qualified to play Gimli in the Lord of the Rings. Was. Absolutely. <laughs> And he was initially hired to focus on horse stunts. Like, that was it. He was only going to be doing horse stunts. And in an interview with Polygon, he said, I did that for two weeks, and out of everything I've done, my God, that was dangerous. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, yeah, they were, man, riding all over the place. But you know that wasn't all they asked him to do. It, It just got worse from there. Yeah. Well, he ended up eventually being cast as Reese Davies' stunt double in the movie. And the way that happened is Reese Davies got a horrible allergy reaction to the facial prosthetics that was being applied to his face to take on the role of Gimli. And because of that, Beatty ended up in the role of his main double. So it was Reese Davies. Main Gimli, dialogue guy, and then Beatty for everything else. For everything else. Yeah. He was the main guy. He was the go-to guy for Gimli for every crazy scene that you saw in that movie. (laughs) So when I say every crazy scene, Beatty spent 189 days shooting as Gimli in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. That's 2,300 hours that he played Gimli for. And this guy doesn't even have a credit on IMDb. (laughs) That's what kills me. So when you told me about this, I went and watched Fellowship again. And majority of the fight scenes, majority of the um, like helicopter scenes where they're flying over the group. Yeah. that's, That's the meat and potatoes of the movie that these shots... And he's that guy. He's the guy in there. And then when of every when, far off shot, every stunt shot you see is him. So it just when you watch that movie, look how many of those shots are like. Right. It's nuts, dude. Like, well, we're going to get into it. But like a couple of stunts that you think were probably faked or there was a harness or a wire. No. We're, we'll put it in the, the Twitter account. We'll show you the pictures. This guy was doing these stunts. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> so it's pretty amazing. Um, but in an interview, Beatty said, I'm aware that a lot of people, even hardcore Lord of the Rings fans, assume that a lot of the shots are some tricky sort of camera angles or some CGI shrinking John Reese davies down. I don't right. want to burst anyone's bubble but I can only think of a couple of shots where CGI was used to shrink Reese Davies down. Only a couple. Everything else right. was everything else was him. And <laughs> it's crazy because he was doing so much and mm-hmm. and like involved in so much action while shooting the film that Beatty blew out both of his knees. And he's gone through three knee reconstruction surgeries because of his time on the movie. Right. Let me remind you, this guy doesn't even have a credit on IMDb. That's what's killing me, dude. I mean, yeah, because he's the one swinging the axe in the fight scenes. He's the one rolling around on the ground. Well, not, not only that, but there are like tons of other things that he got hurt on, like... So he had close calls that include a sinking canoe. He had to dodge horse hooves. His horses were riding around him, and he could have easily been trampled. Uh, He took an axe to the head. (laughs) And (laughs) Billy's laughing. Yeah, (laughs) He took an axe to the head. (laughs) I'm just joking. I mean, I'm I'm glad he lived, but I mean, how many people can say that? I I got axed in the head. And... (laughs) Uh, at one point, while holding one of the heavier, more detailed prop axes for a close-up shot of Gimli while, while he's running, Beatty attempted to toss the weapon from one hand to the other, and he like ended up hitting his head and nicking his brow. He said, I clipped my own brow on the way past, 
because I was wearing a prosthetic mask. The blood couldn't get out. So the blood built up and built up under the mask until eventually an eye bag, which was glued on, actually ruptured. And the blood just started spurting out of his face. And he says, Ugh. it looked a lot worse than it actually was. <laughs> but could you imagine seeing that? Like, he got nicked, and he had so much prosthetic on that the blood just started building up under it until it blew up all over. It's just a big explosion of blood. And and anybody who's no anybody who's been clipped on the forehead, on the head, near your eyebrows, that just bleeds for so long. You could feel fine, but it's just going to keep bleeding. So that yeah. had to be crazy. Ah oh, man, what a crazy experience! Right. When it comes to the facial prosthetics mm-hmm. that he was wearing, it, it and that everyone else was wearing, it's explained that the scale doubles who were playing the hobbits in the movie, they wore full rubber masks that they could just pull on and off. Mm-hmm. So the hobbits just wore these masks. Okay. And there I've was seen an them. unwritten they look pretty cool. Yeah. But exactly. They're they're just masks. Yeah. And there was an unwritten rule that they couldn't be in the masks for more than an hour at a time on set for the hobbits. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> but obviously this, his wasn't a mask because they had to get close-ups of him. So yeah, so Beatty had more mm-hmm. than two kilograms of silicon and foam rubber glued to his face for a minimum of 12 hours a day, sometimes more. So you had these Hobbit guys who had the easy job of slipping on and off the mask where Beatty had to put on this heavy prosthetic makeup and then sit in it forever. (laughs) Forever. Yeah, dude. I mean, his was a process to put on. His couldn't couldn't go easily on and off. So Ex- no matter what they did, yeah, exactly. He, he had it. And Beatty said that a lot of guys couldn't do it. He said I'd actually seen a guy ask to put it on, and he was getting claustrophobic and had to take it off. So even when people were like, "Oh, I could do it," once they tried it, they just they couldn't take it. So Beatty was man enough <laughs> to keep this prosthetic makeup on for pretty much as long as they needed him to. Right. I mean, I don't think he had any other choice. I mean, they were on a tight schedule of filming, so, yep. you know, he was stuck. Yeah. And as you might expect, all of this, the phys- all the physical stuff he was going through, the prosthetics the stunt work that he had to do, the hitting him, getting hit in the head with an ax, all this <laughs> stuff. It was taking a toll on the poor guy. Heck yeah, it was. So he, so near the end of shooting, Beatty was really doing the best he could, but he was having a rough time. So due to the prosthetics, he was essentially sweating out chemical adhesives that were used to attach the Gimli prosthetics on his face. So even when he wasn't wearing the prosthetics, his face was sweating out the prosthetics. <laughs> <laughs> like when we told you in the beginning of this that he gave his all for this movie, he literally gave all. That guy. I, th- I think he sacrificed out. more than anybody else in the movie. Like 100%. I think he sacrificed more than any other person on this film after reading this i just don't think anyone else could hold a candle to what this guy did for this for these films you know that's what i'm saying like they talk they they tell the story about how vigo mortensen broke his toe kicking the helmet in that scene that was his toe this guy had to have three knee replacements (laughs) just because of this movie yep he was sweating chemicals and had to ride horses that he could potentially die on, getting stomped, drowning. Not even a single IMDb credit. The guy is nowhere to be found. 
he and his prosthetic artist, Tammy Lane, they were frequently the first people on the set of the film. Mm. They were there in the early hours of the morning to get him ready for the shoot. Mm-hmm. And his sleep schedule was completely just thrown out the window, thrown completely off. Like, what sleep schedule? So, right. and everything that was going on because of the toll this was all taking on him, he had trouble sleeping because of onset insomnia from the experience. So right. he had to take, so he ended up taking naps while in costume while filming the movie. Like that's where he got his sleep during the production. He would sleep on the set whenever he could, whenever the right. time presented itself where he could grab a couple minutes, <laughs> I guess. He, he would talking about that. He, he said, I'd get woken up, Brett, you're on. And the next thing you know, I'd be running through Fangor Forest or the Mines of Moria getting chased by goblins. He goes, I wasn't awake. I wasn't asleep. I just ended up in this really crazy state of consciousness. (laughs) That's awful. He existed. (laughs) He showed up and existed to do whatever they asked him to do for this character. (laughs) Right. I mean... That's just what blows my mind is that up until what? When was the original Lord of the Rings? When was the Fellowship of the Rings made? When did it release? What, 2000, 2001? 2001, I believe. And we're just now talking about this guy. I know. Now. Ah, oh, it drives me nuts. I, I feel bad. The Lord of the Rings trilogy is my, fa- they're my favorite movies of all time, like my number one. Like I consider the yes. whole trilogy of a single film. It's my number one movie of all time. And the fact that I have never heard of this until now, like I feel bad as a right. hardcore oh, fan. Too. Like I feel bad that I didn't know this guy before. And ah, I mean, he went above and beyond for this role. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For this movie. Like, yeah, crazy. He, and he was just a kid at the time, too. So. Yeah, I, I say guy, but at the time he was a young, he was a young kid, like, Ugh. like early. What was it? Early 20s, early 20s, late teens, yeah. early 20s. Yep. Oh. He's going up. He's acting. He's doing these action sequences. And we'll we'll get into what his label is later. But I just can't even say it. It pisses me off. <laughs> but the good thing is is the cast recognized the efforts that he was putting into the film into this role and the cast embraced him as one of their own he worked with the cast so much that he was one of the few members who was invited by the to go get the lord of the rings tattoos and we all heard how the cast got together and got the matching Lord of the Rings tattoos. Right. Well, right. Brett Beatty was invited to do that with the cast, with the rest of the main cast, which is something that Reese Davies opted not to do. Like he's like, nah, I'm not going to do it. So Beatty took that honor and they gave that honor to him, which I thought was super freaking cool that they right. that they did that for him. Because he was working with the cast more than Reese Davies was. Right. And he had that bond. And so he Yeah, he formed he the... formed that fellowship bond with the cast. Hundred percent sure for sure. In regards to all of that, he says, I remember Elijah Wood actually approached me first and invited me. And to tell you the truth, my biggest concern at the time was John Reese Davies. I knew that this wasn't supposed to be for me to be asked to get this tattoo. So I said that I had to think about it. He explains that he relented and gave in when Vigo Mortensen and Orlando Bloom came to him and asked him again the following day. So when all the cast came in to ask him, he decided, you know what? I'm not going to pass up this opportunity. 
So that Sunday afternoon, BD, Figo Mortensen, Orlando Bloom, Elijah Wood, Sean Austin, and Ian McKellen, Billy Boyd, and Dominic Monaghan, they all headed to the tattoo parlor in Wellington to get the Elvish numerals engraved on their bodies. And <sighs> he said, no doubt about it, it was an honor for him. Completely honored to be a part of that group. And that that's one of those things where it's like, man, that touches the soul. You know what I mean? Right. Like, he was one of them. This is the thing. And this is why this bothers me so much. So, yes, he got the tattoo, right? Yeah. He got a small credit in there. But do you realize, like, it hit me the other day. My son is going as Legolas for Halloween this year. Okay. 20 years after the movie came out, kids are still going out as characters from this movie. I guarantee you there's a kid going out there as Gimli at some point, not knowing that Brett put everything on the line for this and they gave all the credit to John Reese davies And I get it, though. I mean, John well, Reese davies was the marketable name. actor. He was the name. Right. He was the guy they cast. He's, a, he's, he's an iconic actor. So, yes, he's the guy. We'll get into the credits later. Yeah. But after BD got the tattoo with the group, he does have a regret. What's that? Well, after he got the tattoos, he's, he explains, Elijah said to him, myself and a few of the cast members are going to Peter Jackson's armory today um, to play with machine guns. Come. He turned him yep. down. He said he was no. so utterly exhausted from the shooting and the schedule and the insanity that he went through that he declined because he was just flat out too tired and knocked out. Which sucks. <laughs> because you're being invited to Peter Jackson's house to shoot guns. <laughs> right. And it's like, I'm oh man, what I wouldn't give for that experience <laughs> to be with all those guys going out there firing off guns at Peter Jackson's house. So, you know, he had to be hurting at that point to turn down, to turn like that, that down. He must've been just feeling like hell. Cause he had, mm -hmm. he had gone through hell for this role. Oh, geez, man. Right. It's, ah, uh, so, but he, that has to, that speaks volumes to his state of mind at that time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, he turned down going to Peter Jackson's house with the main cast of the film to shoot guns. He turned that opportunity down, which tells you he was just white, completely white. Like he went on to say, I almost feel like I owe the cast some sort of apology for not digging deeper and making that effort. I spent a lot of time on set with the cast as a professional working. I spent a lot of time with mainly Vigo and Orlando socializing and fishing, but I didn't have much time with the rest of the Hobbit actors or Peter Jackson. It was all very professional, and that was an opportunity to get to meet them and get to meet me without a mask glued to my face. So this was like after the fact, he started thinking about all of these things, you know, and Obviously, now he, you know, like he says, he regrets it. But, man, what a rough go. Right. So, I mean, obviously, yeah. it sucked yeah, for him. But, it did. but look at what he accomplished. <laughs> oh. He, you and I can't say that we were in any of the Lord of the Rings movies. I can't. You know? I can't. But he's got the tattoo that only the group has. I mean, that's... That's saying something. That alone. Yeah, that's saying something. So, oh, man. while he was shooting the film, he didn't have an agent. He didn't have any kind of representation. He was just a stunt guy doing his thing. But with the encouragement of the main cast members, mm -hmm. Beatty asked to get a screen credit because of the amount of time and effort that he had put into Gimli. 
He went to the producers. And the cast backed him on it. And like, hey, man, you got to go do this. You, you deserve it. You put so much effort into this. Go ask for real credit. And when I mean, what I mean by real credit is he went to ask for a co-credit alongside Reese Davies. Like he wanted, it was, it was Reese Davies and Brett Beatty. Co-credit for Gimli. The producers initially agreed. Oh, okay, cool. They say that he, they, they told him that he was going to be listed in the credits as Gimli's stunt scale and photo double. Like, they agreed he was going to get that co-credit. Right. But, There's and this is but. where things really suck <laughs> for, <laughs> for poor Brett Beatty. A week later, he was told that he actually couldn't be given the screen credit due to, and I quote, movie politics and, again, I quote, concerns about preserving the illusion that is Gimli. Now, BD is listed in the credits, but only as a stump performer. That's it. No credit to him playing Gimli at all. And that's, okay, if we can say anything in this, if you're a, a, an upcoming actor, like you're trying, you're trying to make it into the business, always have representation. Just make sure you have somebody who's got your back that can make sure they stick to what they say. But this all was a happy, a- happy accident for the guy. Like he came oh, really? in with no agent. He came in to be a guy on the freaking... A stunt man on a horse. That's that was what he's originally hired for. That was it. So being able to take on the role of Gimli was a, a happy accident, happy and kind of heartbreaking because right. he took on the role and he got an amazing opportunity, but it tore him up right. <laughs> in so many ways. And that what what kills me about this is like I always like to think I'm the better person in situations. I'm gonna let it slide off my back. But this guy, he holds no grudges. Oh, against these people. No, obviously, yeah, obviously he was disappointed. Sure, of course, of anyone course. would be disappointed with that kind of news. But yeah, he holds no grudge, even though he put more work into the role than Reese Davies did. He's a strong man. <laughs> <laughs> My, I mean, yeah, because I would have, I'd have whined like a little kid. I just want to be recognized. No, this guy, he went through it. He did it, dude. Remember, um, remember the scene where they're like, with, you know, the whole never toss a dwarf roll. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is what I was talking about earlier. Go, okay, go yeah, into yeah. it. Go into it then. Okay. So in the. Uh, Looking up pictures, there's some really cool pictures of him in the movie. So obviously, there's there's proof that he was in the movie. There's a couple of pictures of like Orlando Bloom holding his hand while he's getting the tattoo. That's cool as heck, man. I love that. That just shows Orlando Bloom's a cool guy. That, yeah, we'll put you know, that on our Twitter. Yeah, it'll be on the Twitter. But the picture I like more is, you know, the whole never toss a dwarf thing. They have a picture of him training. To get thrown across that chasm. They threw him across for threw real. Threw him across. <laughs> and there's a pad. It's easily like 15, 20 feet away. Like they threw him over this gap to land on this like three inch thick pad. And he just looks like scared out of his wits. But I'm like, that guy's so much braver than I am. <laughs> that Oh, man. At some point I would have been like, yeah, no, we're good. I, I don't need you to throw me. Man, I but, yeah, I mean, that's just. But that that was that was him. I mean, that's what he did. All of those shots, everything like that. Like he was he the guy being tossed. There. He was the guy being tossed tossed around. Again, he blew out both of his knees in right. the process of making this movie. Yeah. I mean, and it's but, and we as fans, we don't recognize that kind of stuff. Like the the effort, and you know, it's kind of like. 
watching Tom Cruise do all of his own stunts, like things that most actors would be like, nah, I, I give me a stunt stunt double. To yeah, do this. totally. This kid went balls to the wall, man. He he took on every job. He got beat up. He bled for this movie, dude. And he seriously, got, like I said, man. He put more blood, sweat, and tears into this movie than I think anyone else did. Like, seriously. This guy's like, Brett Beatty is like my hero in Lord of the Rings now. Like, I have a newfound respect for the trilogy of films because of the sacrifices and the craziness and the hard-ass work that... Brett Beatty put into the movie. I mean, I'm definitely watching it in a, in a different light. I have to, I am going to have a weekend of just Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, but now I'm going to watch it in a different way and pay attention to what this guy did. Just it, when they're battling the troll, all the things that he's doing in that, in those know. fights, that fight scene uh, alone. It's, it's crazy. My mind is, yeah. My mind is blown now when I watch that movie because yeah, it's... I know because now I know what Beatty put into that role. Like now that I know and when I watch it, I know that and I appreciate it so much more. And not just Gimli, but the movie as a whole is just taken to a whole other level because of the sacrifices that Beatty made for the production. To bring Gimli to life for the fans. Ah, oh. it, it, man, I, I love the guy. We were talking earlier. We'd love to get this guy. We'd love to get Brett Beatty on the line, get him on the podcast, and talk to us. Dude, I would love to freaking talk to him and I'd just love to talk, to ask him. him questions, and have him tell these stories for him. Like, ha- have him actually tell these stories. That would be so cool. And that would be yeah, just to hear him talk about it. Like, we can talk till we're blue in the face. Oh, this is my favorite scene. This is mine. What's his? What yeah. was the background? What was the hardest one that he had to do? Man, I would love to pick that guy's brain. I just want I want him to have the credit he deserves. And if he's if the producers aren't going to give it to him, I, I would love to give him. I, I would love to get his story out there. That's why I wanted to talk to him on the podcast. I wanted to, to share this thing that most people don't know most lord of the rings fans don't know about this (sighs) so now you know (laughs) yeah now you know and and it's i hope it's something that means as much to you guys as it does to us because we love film we love everything that has to do with making a movie um no matter how dumb a movie is it's it's hard work when i first everybody needs to get when i first read a story i got i choked i got choked up because i couldn't I, I couldn't believe that I, I just had never heard of this, never heard of this guy before. Like, it, right. it hurt my soul. <laughs> but but it, but it made but it made me feel s- good at the same time because of his story is super inspiring. Like, holy crap! Ah, <sighs> it's it's intense. But I I hope I hope our little podcast can get open some eyes for some people to just see that, you know, these little scenes, they can't be taken for granted. There's somebody doing that scene and pushing themselves as hard as they can to entertain us. Yeah. To make it perfect for us. And I just think it's kind of a, he got a raw deal on this one because those movies are still three of my all time favorite movies. And I look at them as one solid movie too. So I can fit them in my top five and still have four others on that list. But you know, I'll always gonna, I'm always going to love it. I'm always going to watch it. But now it has more meaning in those scenes to know that that when I'm watching it, he put everything on the line for me. Yeah. To enjoy it. Exactly. Is that selfish? Is that selfish of me to think of that way? Nope. He did it for me? Nope. As for what BD is doing now, he'll always be a member of the fellowship, obviously. He's not in touch yeah. with the actors anymore. Was kind of kind of bummed me out to learn that. Orlando Bloom, however, did make an effort to track him down and catch up when they both worked on Peter Jackson's Hobbit films. 
So that was cool of Bloom to do. These days, BD has worked over the years. He's worked with EA Games on the Lord of the Rings video games. He takes the occasional stunt role every now and then for movies or TV shows. He spends most of his time operating a native tree farm in Canterbury, New Zealand. That's cool. He doesn't show off his tattoo much or get any recognition for what he put into the film. Man. He says, I knew I'd done something harder than I'd ever done in my life, and I knew I'd never work that hard again. Ah. Just that quote, dude. That's awesome. What an amazing experience it must have been for Beatty. When talking about his last day of filming on the movie, he says that he'd been up until early in the morning for the home birth of his first child. Then he hopped on a plane to film the two tower scene where Gimli gets pinned by a dead warg and snaps an orc's neck. Within 24 hours, he was back home holding his baby in his arms. He says with a smile, there aren't too many people who have been jumped by a warg, killed an orc, and delivered a baby all in the same day. <laughs> uh, yeah, that did not happen the day my kids were born. No. <laughs> what a rad experience, man. Right. And he's humble about it, too, which Super is Super humble, man. Cool. He's not even talking about it. He doesn't get right. any recognition. Ah. I'm giving him his recognition, Billy. We're giving him his recognition. He needs to be recognized. Stand up Stand, and be recognized, I was just going to say, stand up, Brett Beatty. Be recognized. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope I hope people listen to this, and, and I hope some kind of accolade comes his way. Like, I hope somebody with more power than us is able to give him... I mean, yes, he's got the tattoo, but I mean... Something. Yeah. I, anything. Yep. But yep, this is so, the, I mean, this is the story we wanted to share with you today. The story of Brett Beatty and his time working on the Lord of the Rings trilogy. What a super inspiring story. I just I Right. Man. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I mean and we just we're glad you guys are listening. We appreciate it. It's this means a lot to Joey and I. We we love this kind of stuff. We love movies and we love that what happens behind movies. And we've got a lot coming up for you guys. We're not stopping, we're not slowing down. We we're going to keep going no matter if it's just 10 people listening to this thing. We're going to keep going <laughs> because it makes us happy and we know there's somebody out there that thinks the way that we do. True that, yo. Yo. Uh what do we got planned on for the next one? Um I oh, think we got keep, something. Yeah, we're going to keep it as a surprise. The next one's going to be fun. I'm really excited for the next one. Yeah, so for sure. Please stick with us. Thanks, everybody, for listening to Secret Level. We really appreciate it. Like, subscribe, leave a review on whatever, wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to follow us on Twitter. It's at GT Secret Level. Yep. So... We post like pictures and stuff, behind the scenes photos, videos, things like that of what we're talking about. So feel free to follow us if you want. Follow us there. I'm going to try to post as much as I can to keep you guys interested. Um, just let us know. If, like I said, we're going to do the ones that we love. If there's something that you guys, if there's a story, a background story that you know about. That, yeah, please send it our way, man. Let us like, know. If there's stuff, if there's interesting details that not a lot of people know Shoot us some information. We want to talk about it. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're here. Any Gimli quotes that you want to throw out there before we uh, sign off today? Man, you know, I was thinking about that, and I'm like, uh-huh. and I'm like, you know what? All the stunts he did, I just want to recognize all that stuff. Everything that he put into that role, I just kind of want to recognize him for that. Awesome. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, we're good this one. Thank All you, right, everybody. All right, guys, stick around. Yep. We've got stuff for you. Bye-bye.